38. In this particular lecture, uh, we will cover this modeling and management of groundwater. Under this, uh, I would cover the topics are aquifer yield and groundwater availability Second topic is uh, effects effects of groundwater development and the third and the last one that will cover is that regional scale development of groundwater. So, first topic is our aquifer yield and groundwater availability. So, in this particular talk, topic, we will uh, try to see uh, what is this groundwater. Uh, ground as uh, if you can talk about this water, water is generally considered as a renewable, renewable resource. Sometimes uh, we deviate from that point of view because uh, ground water mining is also there. So, uh, the main point is the ground water, water is renewable resource but the problem is the aquifer recharge recharge versus this groundwater withdrawal this is mostly uneven in nature. So, if a recharge is coming, uh, then we should also consider the groundwater withdrawal from groundwater management point of view, but sometimes uh, uh, there will be situations where our groundwater withdrawal is more than our groundwater recharge scenario. So, so what is the main uh, source for this groundwater recharge? 
So, aquifer is recharged, aquifer recharge is mainly due to precipitation. So, the amount of water, so we can say that this amount of precipitation is limited. So, we can say that our uh, amount of water amount of water considered as renewable is limited. So, this is important point because precipitation is limited. So, we can consider that amount of water uh, considered as renewable is also limited in nature. So, for groundwater uh, management uh, projects, it is important to find out uh, equilibrium between this aquifer recharge and ground uh, water withdrawal. So, the, uh, so our ground water projects or water resources resources projects this equilibrium between aquifer recharge recharge and groundwater withdrawal is important. So, aquifer yield uh, concepts uh, are the fundamental things for finding out or devising any strategy for uh, or to maintain such kind of equilibrium. So, aquifer yield concept aquifer yield concept are foundations foundation for devising any strategy uh, to maintain the such kind of equilibrium. So, this is the foundation for any kind of equilibrium concept and groundwater availability means means the amount of water which is available from the aquifer. So, this is mainly ground water that is available for use from an aquifer.
But the problem is it is not easy to define it uh, or to quantify this uh, particular thing that is uh, available for use from an aquifer. So, how to quantify that thing that is most important aspect of this particular uh, groundwater availability thing. So, this is we can say that this part is difficult to quantify. So, uh, with simple formulas or equation we cannot uh, directly calculate this particular availability. To estimate this uh, we need the numerical ground water models, numerical ground water flow models for complex hydrogeological uh, scenarios. So, one hand uh, this is difficult to quantify, on the other hand uh, we can use our knowledge about the numerical groundwater uh, flow models to model this complex, uh, complex hydrogeological scenario. So, uh, to quantify the aquifer yield the first we need to define a uh, few terms. So, first term is well yield, first term is well yield. So, what is this well yield? Uh, in this thing, uh, we can define this well yield as the volume of water uh, per unit of time discharged from a well either by pumping or uh, free flow. So, we can define it as volume of water per unit of time discharged from a well either by pumping or free flow. So, it is commonly measured as uh, meter cube per day uh, when a water uh, well is uh, pumped the quantity of water discharge initially is derived from the casing storage and then immediately uh, from aquifer storage around the well. So, equilibrium brium occurs when
the cone of depression enlarges to the point at which one or more of the following one or more of the following uh, things happen. One is uh, it intercepts intercepts enough of the natural discharge from the aquifer. Second thing it intercepts a body of surface water third one is that enough vertical recharge The fourth one is sufficient leakage occurs through the overlaying or underlaying uh, formations. So, uh, for well discharge uh, for any unconfined non leaky aquifer is given by Q equals to pi k h square minus small h square divided by log r by small r, where this discharge is the well yield or pumping rate, k is the hydraulic conductivity, then this h uh, H is the static static uh, head measured from the bottom of the aquifer, static head, and small h is the pumping head. and r is the radius of depression radius of the depression small r is the radius of the well So, 
uh, for confined aquifer confined non leaky aquifer this q is 2 pi k b and h this is again log r by smaller where this b is the saturated uh, thickness or thickness of the confined aquifer. So, a properly conducted pumping test can reveal uh, the groundwater uh, scenario or important facts about any particular aquifer. Next important uh, type of yield is that perennial yield or So, this perennial yield is defined as the practicable rate of withdrawing water from it perennially for human use. So, this word practicable is important here because this uh, uh, this pr practicable uh, quantity or practicable rate is uh, which we need to quantify in case of a particular aquifer, but this uh, practicable means that the adverse effects effects of uh, any adverse effect or side effects of any groundwater development groundwater development such as sea water intrusion land surface subsidence salt water coning these are included uh, in this practicable thing. So, it should be such that there will not be any adverse effect related to the groundwater development. So, so perennial yield we can say that this perennial yield is determined
for a specified set of operating conditions So, this uh, perennial yield is similar to the perennial uh, flow in our surface water systems and the perennial yield uh, from a designated uh, reservoir would be achieved if artificial discharge by the well were pertained uh, so as to reduce the discharge from reservoir and induce recharge in an equal amount and if storage were utilized only to provide uh, some kind of uh, regulation of the fluctuating inflow and to meet the demand of the well. So, it is important that uh, so, it should be uh, under certain kind of operating conditions. So, we can have the next term uh, as safe yield, but this perennial yield of the aquifer. Uh, uh, can be thought of some kind of uh, engineered uh, controlled some kind of yield where the perennial in some instances can be substantially by this engineering controls so next term is safe field so what is this safe field so safe field uh, most of the hydrologists prefer this safe field instead of uh, this perennial yield but the problem is that a uh, safe field is uh, is a such a yield which is not controlled by any other operating condition then we can say that this safe field is defined as the maximum annual withdrawal from an aquifer that still maintains the sustainability of the aquifer.
So, uh, we can say that a water resources of an aquifer uh, could be maintained indefinitely if pumping does not exceed the safe field. So, this pumping value or QP should be less than the safe field. So, the safe field uh, is a popular concept uh, in uh, groundwater resources management and it is generally used for uh, different kind of management problems. And this like perennial uh, yield, the safe yield is also difficult to quantify, also difficult to quantify or to determine. because it has no unique or constant value depending uh, on the spacing and location of wells and their influence influence on the aquifer and environment. Next comes this optimal yield. So, this is determined Uh, by using optimization theory considering socio economic issues. So, optimal yield of an aquifer is determined by selecting uh, optimal management approach for any particular aquifer. Uh, optimal yield can lead to optimal yield can lead to depletion or complete conservation of an aquifer.
So, uh, it is important to distinguish uh, between this optimal yield and safe yield. So, this uh, optimal yield can lead to a depletion of the aquifer, whereas this safe yield uh, will maintain the aquifer level or uh, the storage within the aquifer. Next important term is sustainable yield what is this uh, sustainable yield sustainable yield is uh, most useful when applied to well field in situations that is that Thomas has termed as this Thomas is a scientist who has termed as water course aquifer. Situations, uh, we can say that in field situations of water course aquifers. So, such uh, aquifer general uh, such an aquifer generally uh, underlies the flood plain of major river system and is in hydraulic contact with the uh, water in rivers. So, sustainable yield is the minimum. So, sustainable yield uh, is the minimum rate of pumpage sustainable under Uh, all conditions of river discharge by uh, a specified uh, well field that tap the alluvial aquifers. So, 
uh, we have seen that perennial yield, safe yield, optimal yield and this sustainable yield. So, in case of perennial yield, we have seen that uh, we need to maintain some practicable uh, rate of withdrawing water from the aquifer. In case of safe yield, it should be the maximum annual uh, withdrawal from an aquifer that still maintains the sustainability of the aquifer. And optimal yield, this is determined by uh, using optimization theory considering socio-economic. So, here socio-economic issues are important. In case of sustainable yield, this is mostly applicable to water course aquifers and this is uh, uh, the minimum rate of pumpage uh, uh, sustainable under all conditions of river discharge by a specified well field that taps the alluvial aquifer. Next point that we need to discuss is the effects of groundwater development. So, what are the effects of uh, groundwater development? The first effect is uh, water level decline. So, long term uh, effects on regional groundwater levels that is water level decline as long as water is mined that is uh, withdrawal of water uh, in excess of the induced recharge plus the reduced groundwater discharge from an aquifer, the water levels of a potentiometric surface uh, will be uh, continuously lowered uh, in elevation on a year by year basis and uh, this will create problem and this problem is due to groundwater uh, development. Second is depletion of surface water. Depletion of surface water is another major reason here because let us say that this is our groundwater uh, thing and we have this ground surface. Uh, this is our ground surface and we have water level like this. So, this is basically we can say that gaining stream where our water level is here which is above the water level in surface water this is ground water. So, ground water level is more than surface water. So, we can say that as gaining stream otherwise if this ground water level is below the surface water, then there will be movement of water from uh, 
uh, movement of water from surface water towards the ground water body, then we can say that as losing stream So, this is surface water, this is ground water level and this is our ground surface. So, it is important that uh, ground water development can also uh, lead to either losing or gaining stream. If there is too much of pumping from the aquifer, then there will be depletion of ground water and there will be losing stream situation in the aquifer region. Also salt water intrusion is another effect that we have already discussed in uh, our previous lectures. Salt water intrusion, so coastal areas if there is heavy pumping, there will be movement of salt water towards the fresh water aquifer. And the fourth scenario or fourth important point is that land subsidence and earth fishes. So, land subsidence is uh, a gradual setting, uh, settling or a sudden sinking of earth's surface uh, owing to surface water movement and uh, so ground water development can also lead to surface uh, or this land subsidence and there may be uh, generation of this uh, fishes. So, next point is uh, regional scale groundwater development. So, at regional scale we need to address the uh, ground water development uh, issue. So, first is uh, management aspect. So, elements of management plants. So, once management objectives are ad adopted, uh, activities and costs of planning uh, and investigation must be uh, developed in sufficient detail to obtain uh, authorization funds for the study and uh, identification of different uh, uh, management aspects uh, should be uh, fixed. And the next point that is most important is that political boundary versus aquifer boundary. So, for uh, finding out the uh, uh, yield for any particular aquifer, we need to have certain uh, groundwater flow models and in that one uh, we need to have certain boundary conditions. Either we can have 
political boundary in our uh, regional scale model or we can have aquifer boundaries. But the problem is that um, most of the cases aquifers are shared by two uh, political two or more political regions. So, that creates a problem for any uh, regional scale uh, development scenario uh, in groundwater and this uh, uh, identification of uh, boundary condition becomes important and this uh, political boundary or aquifer boundary can be uh, used for modeling purpose. Next aspect uh, that is most important is that uh, transboundary issue. of transboundary aquifers. So, uh, transboundary groundwater uh, refers to continuous groundwater reservoir uh, and uh, it is shared by two or more political jurisdictions. So, here the fixing boundary condition uh, boundary condition is important here uh, different management aspects uh, are uh, important that is uh, joint uh, management plans uh, can be uh, devised for better management of groundwater aquifers. Also, uh, conjunctive use of surface water and ground water is important from uh, the regional scale development uh, aspect. So, in regional scale uh, the use of river water or the surface water available uh, should be supplemented by uh, this ground water uh, or water from the ground water aquifer. So, uh, these are the three uh, major issues related to modeling and management of groundwater aquifer that is aquifer yield uh, and groundwater availability. Then uh, we have discussed the effects of groundwater development and the finally, we have discussed this regional scale development of groundwater. So, uh, this ends this lecture number 38.